never forget God is dog backwards, but it would be backwards thinking to think that a little doggy could have unconditional God love where God, the Creator, does not have that. The Lord God, being a jealous God, He would not make a more loving being than Him, would He? And then, if it's true that uh, He's only got conditional love as the world has always wrongly believed, then a little doggy beats God, hands down. Think about that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Maybe I've been smoking some funny things. I don't think so. But one thing is for sure. The just of the world will want to change the stations and reverse our curse because we have to turn back the battle at the at the gates of, of hell. So in order to reverse the curse, we have to turn back on the music. And a new song is being sung throughout the lands. It is a song of love and the melody and harmony are dancing in the wind, the wind of blessedness of his adoration for us. And for that reason, the Lord clearly in Acts 2 and Joel 2 foretold the day when the Lord would pour out his spirit of love upon all flesh. Because the truest truth is 2,000 years ago, early Christians claimed that they were Israel and that Israel was not really Israel and that all the prophecy in the Bible was for them. But the Kingdom Age New Covenant of Jeremiah 31 that was given in the latter days for Israel, that was God promise, and if God did not deliver that promise, he would be a liar. Uh, so it was addressed correctly to Israel and all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, which is just a short way away from the Kingdom Age Covenant in the same chapter that the numbers uh, were added and scribes added. It was one fluid uh, thought. God was smacking. He knew who he was correctly addressing his Kingdom Age New Covenant of everlasting love to. And so uh, my name is Daniel. I am the one from the north and I come to you uh, as it was foretold, line by line, precept by precept, would the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm to pull down all distortionality. Many are going to say, Lord, Lord, I believed I did this. Believing has never meant squat. It's always been about love. And as the last sentence of Hebrews 8 plainly says, now that the Kingdom Age Covenant has been given to all mankind as correctly addressed, now all faith on earth is totally obsolete as the very last sentence of Hebrews 8 predicted. For our Lord God, he says unto all people, I am your God, you are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity and I shall never remember it. And I shall write my law of love upon your hearts. And beyond that, no more will anyone ever even need to be taught of me, saith the Lord God of Israel. For the last to the, from the last to the greatest of all the 12 houses of Israel, they shall be saved. Uh, all people have to do is keep their love alive as a little child, even if that seed of love that is still flickering in the wind is as the uh, size of a mustard seed. But if we let it go out, then we're cast out into the outer darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is the unforgivable sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Christ said that all sin would be forgiven us, all blasphemies, even blasphemies against him, but not of the Holy Spirit with him living in us. For the truth is, as Romans 3.10 says, there's never been any good people except for Emmanuel. But other than that, there's never been any good man. No, not even one. So there's nothing good about me. It's only Christ living in my heart that makes me good. And you know what? Most people are good. 
And so in this hour, let the just of earth all over the circle thereof celebrate. For through my leading, the spirit of prophecy says, Daniel, my prophet of my harvest has come. Uh, and the Lord says, the vision of Habakkuk was written for the appointed time at the end. And I promise that it would not tarry, it would surely come that people would wait on it. And then the day would come when they would be able to behold my soul not being so upright, but the just will live by my faith, says the Lord God, because I'm already as hell and as greedy thereof as I grab all people of the earth unto our risen Lamb of God, who is the Good Shepherd over all the flocks of man. And so in this hour, it's time to rejoice because I have agreed to step onto the end time scene uh, just as it is foretold in Daniel 12, 13. In, in spite of the most people wanting to see me as a false prophet whom John the Beloved foresaw, truth is stranger than fiction. I've known my identity for 30 years, and man, I can tell you stories. But I've had open-eyed visions. One time, in two of my open-eyed visions, they both ended the same way, almost like they began. All of a sudden, I'm there in bed, and this breeze blowing through the wind like a hurricane. The, I look in the, the, the fluttering in the wind, the drapes fluttering, fluttering, and the wind of blessing is up and down me. It was like a, a, a warmth, but yet it was chilly, cold, and hot, and sweet, and sour. It was, it was just it was blowing my mind. It was beauty, and it was the best high I ever have had. Uh, nothing has ever compared to that feeling of oneness that I had with the Lord for a brief moment. And then I wrote 200 books, and then I made 10,000 videos because of that breath. And I'm still energized from the second breath that he gave me. But praise God, when I looked, the drapes are just a-floating in the wind. And then all of a sudden, I'm not going to share the rest of it, but at the end, as I was waking up, all of a sudden, the drapes were gone. And I looked at my window and it was always shutters and the window was always naturally closed. But when I looked, the window was open, the drapes were fluttering in the wind and the wind of the Holy Spirit was baptizing me with his fire to make me as a trailblazer to light the wicks of all those who want truth for a change. Because if I'm telling the truth, the kingdom age could come solely by the Lord's supernatural wor word, and it would happen naturally. Most Christians out there have such twisted understandings, they don't understand uh, nothing about the future. The future of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands, says the Lord. Isaiah 45, command you me. I did. I commanded the Lord, and I demanded, if you're calling me, because I had heard God's audible voice unto me a couple times. And uh, at one point, it was like, if you're telling me what I think you're telling me, you're going to have to prove it. I want a fleece that's wet and the ground dry, and then I want the ground dry and then the fleece wet. I want like a, a supernatural sign like uh, uh, Gideon had. And so the next thing I knew, the Lord lit a light bulb, and it was never plugged in through three feet away from the plug. But it was on for, for seven minutes while I was writing a letter until I put the paper down, pushed it away, and was disgusted at myself for even thinking to write the next sentence. Because I was about to ask my pastor, who ended up marrying Linda and I, uh, if uh, God was still a God of miracles. I knew he was. But then all of a sudden, I'm in the dark. That is the candlestick of Zechariah 4, by the way, that story. And uh, the alcoholic of Zechariah 3 was of me, the alcoholic Shiloh, 
eyes red and a dollar wine that holds the scepter of all kingdom authority, Genesis 49, 12. One transgressed by wine, Habakkuk 2, but the just better live by my faith because I am the wheat calling the wheat. Deep calls unto deep. And it's time for the great falling away to happen all over the earth as Thessalonians foretold, but it is ordered of God. It is time to leave. Uh, if you have a bunch of fruit in a bowl and some of it's rotten, all of it will go rotten. So the good needs to leave the bad. And there is no good man. Uh, it's not about leaving people. Um, it's their um, racist, spiritual, bigoted, uh, hogging heaven mentality because none of them have ever believed the New Testament that the church has been standing on falsely uh, in a twisted version of it for 2,000 years. And so in this hour, the wise shall swiftly come to see that the latter day John the Baptist uh, as uh, being something that has to happen. And uh, even though I am the Elijah, many will accuse me and already have of being wicked. Uh, I got one guy, Randy Beast, out there. He keeps leaving messages. I'm a wicked, wicked man. <laughs> Because I'm praising love, oh my God. I know how it's uh, how Christ was rejected. I'm being rejected the same way here at this channel. So prepare the way then for spiritual excellence coming from he who is our treasure of excellence, the excellence of treasure thereof. For he alone is our priceless pearl of great reward. He is our shining majesty of majesty, standing in the magnificence of his beneficence and rolling thunder as his word comes forth. And so prepare the way. Uh, and so the Lord says, Why else did I command all people of faith to await the coming of my last prophet? Moses said in Deuteronomy 18.18 18, that the end time prophet uh, only death would be ahead of him if people would not listen to him. And uh, Acts 3 verifies that Moses was talking about a um, end time prophet, not Jesus, because Peter uh, was talking, used Moses' word in referencing the one that was still to come, the one that Jesus foretold as the one who would restore all things, the Elijah task writer of the Word of God, Habakkuk, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. And so in this time, it's time to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The Elijah who is yet coming, the original Elijah, one of the two witnesses, he's not going to be turning hearts to uh, uh, each other. He's going to be bringing death at that point. If people won't listen to the one preaching love, they're going to hear about death, I promise you. And so it's time that we all need to, everybody needs to love everybody. Like my hero, uh, Will Ferrell, always uh, coined in one of his movies, Semi-Pro. So receive now the most mightiest, blessed blessing of my right hand, says the Lord, in order to, for my people's souls to be spared the fires of their own hellish uh, ignorance, their lack of knowledge that people have been destroyed. For know ye not that my love is a consuming force, uh, so much that it even sparks the cherubim, seraphim, and ophanan angels uh, when they were created. A spark, be a living fire, a flame thereof. And so it's time. In the, um, it's interesting, in the Islamic religion, it is written that the jinn, the demons, are born of fire as mankind came through the dirt of the ground. So behold the hordes of hell and lament their end uh, and coming with time's desperation, which shall now sweep across the lands. For if the voice of love is shut down, the voice of hell upon earth shall start shouting victory thereover. So be followers of the Lord, faithful few, and be the royal priest 
royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and know that messenger angels and archangels alike both took their first bows uh, unto our Lord after stepping out from the midst of our, the word of God, supernatural word of flames of, ablaze with, with the coolest blue fires. Uh, and the, the grandeur of that was amazing. So the Lord says, let the just therefore now enter into the coolest fires of our love's hottest inferno, and let the wise envision the vain fight being plucked out of the wretched heart of Iblis as he has been cast away in accordance with Daniel 12, 1 for the next thousand years, as his fires of corruption have now been made harmless. So the victory of life is knowledge, says the spirit of love, and ignorance brings nothing but death and defeat. For the Lord says, my spiritual fires are everlasting, and my message herein shall exhort all believers within love as they allow their hearts to remain as a little child. And then they will be exalted far above all earthly concerns, and a little one shall lead a million others. And so shall it be that whosoever puts their faith into action shall become overjoyed as this holy word of love sings out my highest praises, says Adonai. So it's time to realize that uh, our everlasting Father can never possibly lie. And so if there was not a Latter-day Daniel, his word would be a lie. If there was not a veil of a mystery that would be revealed in the latter days, as Isaiah 25 says, has been over all nations, his word would have been a lie. And if gross darkness had not covered all of mankind, all of man, all, all, all of mankind, then his word would have been a lie. And if one in the authority of Elijah did not come forth, then Jesus would have been a liar, Matthew 17, 11. And if the restoration of all things did not include knowledge of the uh, false prophet, his word would have been a lie, Dr. David O.R., calling down fire in front of multitudes, as uh, it is written in Revelation 13. And if the lawless one had not been revealed, uh, his word would have been a lie, morgue official, the sword swallower who has 666 on his wall, the Hyperion uh, YouTuber out there, the lawless one. And if the king of the north was not revealed, then his word would have been a lie because all things would be restored. Putin is the king of the north of Daniel 12 who has in, in, invaded the king of the south in Daniel 11. The vision is for a time, times, and a half a time. And now the great bear is rising out of the sea, munching on three ribs caught between his fangs. Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk, the three ribs of the annexed pieces of Ukraine stolen. And then the great bear will hear the words, now go eat all the flesh that you would like. Putin is already declaring on uh, state television that they are at a hot war with NATO. It's handwriting on the wall, people. And all the world, if you will not turn towards truth, all the world will, all of us will have to go under into the ground, into the caves, into the dens of the world. Uh, the Bible says all the kings, all the slaves, everyone, because there will be a nuclear winter. The Bible predicts long before nuclear fission was ever discovered and harnessed that the eyes would be consumed away in the sockets, tongues would consume away in the mouth, and flesh would consume away as it is described in the book of Zechariah. That is the thermonuclear war, and the skeletons wouldn't even have time to hit the ground before the flesh was gone. And so in this hour, it's time that I'm piecing together all the prophecies of the Bible. And God is therefore sent a word of patience to keep us all from the hour of the temptation not to change. We must change and we must beat our swords into the sickle of Revelation 14 for his harvest of love. And it can only happen by the realization that God has never had love less than a little doggy. <laughs> Anybody thinking that is the what's in this world? 
And people want to think that God loves them today, hates them tomorrow, loves them today, hate on, off, on, off. Never been true. And so in this hour, love from love, butterfly kisses from he who is blowing his very best good wishes for all of us.